water. So many things come to mind when I think of water. It quenches our thirst when we are thirsty. It cools us down when we are hot. It flows through the creeks, rivers, seas, and oceans, providing a home and life for many of God's creatures. It comes to us through the rains and cleanses the ground while providing nourishment to plants, animals, and other forms of life on earth. We use it to bathe ourselves, to wash our clothes, our dishes, our floors, and a multitude of other things. Water is a cleansing element. In the church, water serves as the outward and visible way in which we are baptized. Baptism being the saving salvation that allows us to wash away our sins and be united into the death and resurrection of Christ. Baptism, our entrance, our way into God's church, is a way for us to renew ourselves in a new life in the Holy Spirit. Water is physically and symbolically cleansing. It is a way of renewal. Think about how, when we're tired, we might go to the sink and splash a little water on our face. Water wakes us up, gives us a sense of renewed energy. A little splash of water on our face can also calm us when we're bothered or upset. I think of how I feel after I've showered in the morning, refreshed and ready to start a new day. I think about how sometimes a good cry can really make me feel better. A release of tears can just sometimes push those feelings out when words just simply aren't there. And then I think of the basin of water that Jesus prepares in our gospel reading for tonight. A humble and selfless act of loving kindness done to those closest to him at a time when he knew that what was about to happen to him. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Jesus knows he is about to die, and yet out of his love for the disciples, he carries out this act of loving service to each and every one of them. He knows that some are about to betray him in his last moments, but still he gracefully shows his love and washes their feet one by one. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. In Jesus' last days, his last hours, he served others. As I reflected on this gospel reading, I couldn't help but relate to the disciples that evening. To have been in that room that night, to experience, just as one of those disciples, such a humbling act. I lost a good friend and mentor seven years ago. Maundy Thursday is a particular part of Holy Week that I often think of her. Monday Thursday meant a lot to her, and it was a particular time of year where I truly saw her embrace a true servant love for others. A memory I hold closest to my heart was the look of love and compassion in her eyes when she washed my feet for the very first time, and again when she washed my feet for the very last time. She'd been ill for quite some time, and yet I found the last months of her life, and more so the last weeks of her life, a complete parallel to Jesus' final days. I believe this is quite common as we watch a loved one in their final stages of life. But for me, that year, I couldn't help but reflect on knowing that just as Jesus knew his hour had come, we both knew so had hers. She died five days before Monday, Thursday that year. But we had, in our special way, symbolically been able to lovingly serve each other in many ways that still felt 
like the water was shared from the basin. I have to wonder though, how the disciples felt when they were told by Jesus that he had set an example for them by washing their feet that night and that you also should do as I have done to you. I can honestly say I experienced that with my friend and mentor. There were countless times over the course of the years we knew one another that we had shared in being there for one another and selflessly supported and served one another. I wonder though, did the disciples also share that same experience? When we retell this story, when we live and share in this story, it is with our own humility that we receive a compassionate understanding of how others may feel on the receiving end. It can be a state of vulnerability, or perhaps for some, shame that others are serving them when they don't feel worthy enough to be served. For some, it's a sense of pride we like to think we are independent and don't need to depend on others to help us with something. And yet, what Jesus is trying to say is that in order to truly serve others, you must experience both serving others as well as allowing them to serve you. More importantly, we should serve from the heart out of love, not obligation. Jesus loved the disciples and those that were in the world to the end. He loved them and served them in his last hours. Perhaps what we take from this is to think about what our own last days, our own last hours might look like. What acts of service might we consider? Will it be providing a meal to someone who is hungry Will it be as a volunteer? Will it be sitting and listening to a friend or stranger in need? Will it be an act of forgiveness? Will it be as an advisor or mentor? Did we show compassion? Jesus loved the disciples by showing them that night how they could serve others. We're reminded that sometimes serving others means we need to allow them to serve us. And at times we simply need to let go and allow a sense of humility to be present with gracious acceptability. We need to accept what is offered with the grace and love for which it is intended to bring. For it is not just simply the act being done, but the love expressed through the action that is considered service. Jesus didn't just wash the disciples' feet that night. He loved them. He loved and served them in his last hours. He showed them kindness and compassion by including each of them. By washing their feet, he showed them an opportunity for reconciliation. Vulnerability and shame were cleansed away. He didn't let the anticipated betrayals or even what current sins or wrongs they did impede his actions. With water, Jesus washed their feet. With love, he served them. With action, he gave them a chance to be renewed. And with command, he asked them to love one another, just as he has loved them. We are not able to be together this year in person to share a pitcher and basin filled with water and humbly wash one another's feet. We can, however, continue to reflect during the rest of this Holy Week and consider how we might lovingly serve others in a way that shares a renewal in Christ's love for us. Amen.